introduction to the topic and you know we were just discussing as to how each and every one of us at certain point of time have been targeted like i was having a conversation from some uh, with somebody who said that you know i get a message from hdfc first near, nearing my birthday than you know one of my relatives which is a testament you know to the fact that we do a lot of hyper personalization overall every day so uh, i'll quickly introduce the topic as well we are talking about consumer insights and data analytics and their usage in marketing and we know from the entire consumer journey standpoint right from the acquisition to bucketing them also to use them on a day to day basis as captive audience cross sell upsell and to use customer data therefore to create communication as well we we see it in all forms of communication throughout the consumer journey so i'll just like to start you know uh, with asking that how well uh, in today's time and age is uh, data analytics been used especially in this segment like the segment which we are talking about is bfsi and uh, how do each one of you use use it for your own brands and and at what point of time in the journey uh, we use it and uh, it'll be great if you could give some examples uh, we can start uh, prasad with you Hey, thanks, uh, uh, thanks for that question. Um, so, when we talk about uh, today's world, when we talk about the marketing, uh, two things which cannot be separated from marketing today are uh, one is data, and second one is the technology. I think there are two things which are now integrated with marketing. And when we talk about using data and technology for any of the marketing activities, I would say everywhere we are using it. There is no place which is without data. Gone are the days when we, we used to take the decisions on the basis of. Uh, gut feeling now entire decision uh, making is on uh, data and technology and with the help of technology everything is in real time so we do not do the analysis and then add that insight into the campaign later everything is nowadays real time just to give you uh, one of the examples uh, uh, which uh, we have been doing from last couple of years now is uh, the entire uh, 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 the scm part of it the search engine marketing has completely gone um, uh, data centric as well as automated we do not do the uh, uh, optimization on the basis of what was the cost per lead cost per click uh, or maybe tcpa uh, that we don't do what we do is we rely on the automated engines which run on data to do that activity for us so uh, that kind of uh, integration which has already happened the second kind of uh, uh, data uh, utilization which is happening in today's world is understanding the consumers better like uh, ravi talked about in the previous session that how they are using the data uh, for the personalization uh, uh, and hyper personalization for that matter uh, what happens generally that uh, the data for a bank is easier to get because a lot of transactions are happening on their platform they get a lot of information in case of life insurance that information is quite limited so we need to rely on the some of the data points which are about the consumer behavior about the consumer preferences basis what is available in the market in form of a third party data uh, correct so uh, if i talk about the campaigns what we execute uh, uh, as a category uh, of activity there lot of uh, innovations have happened beyond the basic customer demographics and customer interest lot of data is today available basis what they do what do they transact what is their uh, uh, on an average income level all that information nowadays goes into our performance marketing campaigns so that we can target the consumers in a better manner and generate the leads like every bfsi company has the final goal to generate that customer interest and lead that entire data goes into generating a valid lead which can convert better so that's where we look at from the data perspective wonderful wonderful so you're saying that you categorize basis certain demographics and psychographics bucket it in certain segments and maybe customize messages for them yeah akhil i'll uh, you know the same question for you and just if you could address it thanks uh, so i think uh, a lot of what uh, prasad has said is you know what i would also reflect i think at least in our you know in our lines of business really this is how data is being used today you cannot is we are at that situ we are at that stage where data technology cannot be disconnected from you know uh, how we run our business they are integral to our day to day functioning uh, i think 
probably the one shift that we have kind of begun, that I personally have observed, uh, is that uh, there is a lot of impetus right now on the size of the data, right, and what the data is saying as compared to maybe uh, uh, less of a, you know, slightly less of importance given to really who is analyzing the data, okay? Uh, what do I mean by that? So, uh, today a lot of decisions, we talk about making data driven decisions, really a lot of the decisions or the insights that are coming in are people who understand data really well, right? Uh, so, they could be data scientists, they could be statisticians. Uh, they're not necessarily very well trained when it comes to consumer insights. To me, that's a very different skill set, right? Uh, and whenever you look at large industries being disrupted, right, when new players come in, uh, it's usually because the larger players, while they are sitting on a lot, you know, a lot of data, uh, and as the BFSI industry, I think we probably have some of the best first party data that's available out there in the market, right? Uh, but what they miss is really reading of the tea leaves, right? Understanding how consumer preferences are going to shift. And I think the bigger impetus for us today as brands, especially within BFSI is how do you really take that intelligence around the consumer, not just actions, not just behavior. So not just your identity, your spending patterns, you know, where you're spending, how often you're reading out, how often you're shopping, or in our case, really, you know, what is life stage you at so I can sell you insurance. But how do I use that to build a narrative that makes me connect with you in a more compelling way? I think stitching that together really is uh, I think the big challenge for us today as, uh, as organizations in BFSI uh, and uh, one, of the, uh, one of the ways that we look at it really today is that in the marketing team right now at Bandhan Life, we have at least three people today who've got consumer insights backgrounds, right? So they are performance, today they are not doing, they're not, I'm not asking them to do market research projects. They're also working on performance marketing campaigns. They're also working on on-ground activations. They're also working on, you know, brand communications. But their background is consumer insights because there has to be some human intelligence that is being applied to, to nuance the quality of the decision. I think algorithms are phenomenal, right? They help you make decisions very, very fast. The challenge that we face today is that nobody really knows what's gone into the algorithm or very, very few people do and understand it. And when you trust the algorithm very, very blindly, and that happens when you have, you know, when you, when you onboard new platforms, new data stacks, when you, then you are somewhat limited by, limited by what that algorithm is giving to you as a decision, right? So from our perspective, yes, it's, it's integral. You can't do without it. Uh, digital, like he said, is the backbone, data is the oil that runs it, but I think human intelligence still has a really important role to play and there is, I would say for all marketers today, you know, it's very important, go out into the field, right, interact with your customer, figure out really how is it that they are making decisions, right, there are things that we might consider as being really important for them that they don't simply, you know, uh, take into account at all and really use that human intelligence, bring, bring, that, bring that back into your, into your data story. Wonderful. Um, you know, which brings me to the next question and, uh, you know, the fact remains that we're collecting a lot of consumer insights, consumer data, their behaviors and everything. How well as marketeers are we using it for customizing that communication and the spiel from a brand standpoint to reach out to these, each of these data sets? And is it becoming a part of the master communication or is it a support function when we talk about hyper-personalizing uh, communication from a paid, earned and owned perspective overall. So I think this next question would be to you, Ma'am Gitanjali. Thank you. Uh, I think uh, hyper-personalization existed since forever uh, to the extent in terms of whatever means that, we were, that were available to us at a point in time, we tried to use it to the maximum and now the means that are available are obviously far more immense. Uh, if you remember FMCG days of the 90s and the, at least the 80s and the 90s, we always saw an ad in say a Tamil paper in Tamil, right? That was also hyper-personalization basis what was available then. Right now with technology and data, what I can do is I can target a certain consumer in, his, in the language that he speaks, right? You, especially using generative AI, it's become so much simpler. Variableize it with whatever possible variables that are available to me. And to the extent, understand if I have, for example, if somebody is a prospective, uh, sorry, an existing customer, 
I can completely uh, hyper-personalize it in a manner that I will pitch him what he needs, looking at what he already has. Uh, this is a life insurance heavy panel and we're all trying to always supplement um, or cross-sell definitely, that if you have X amount of cover, it's never sufficient, you should add some more, right? Uh, data and hyper-personalization allows me to offer what is relevant to him rather than just slapping a very common umbrella product which may not even be relevant to the guy. Uh, it just uh, definitely has become a very, I, I would say an integrated part of our lives. Uh, I don't think we are also even looking at it as disconnected at what it used to be. We are ourselves learning from the likes of a Netflix and an Amazon uh, who have paved the way for us. The startups are turning out to be uh, obviously a great uh, guiding light for all of us. Uh, the the age-old companies, it's, it's a little harder for them because our systems are built in and enabled in a certain old fashion and I think our tech stack needs to work much harder than I think uh, the marketing team or anybody in business for that matter. In my sales teams uh, share examples with me of some great work that's out there but the backbone has to be a very strong enabled IT system. So IT infra has to catch up so much more in a lot of our organizations. So, so are we saying the data and analytics team has to be deeply integrated with the tech changes which are happening and therefore customizing data and putting a layer on it? Absolutely. So it's not simply the front end of it, the back end where you are fetching data from five different sources, the authenticity, uh, the relevance, how are you being able to then serve it real time? It all has to be supported with a very robust IT stack. Sure, sure. Akshat, your views on it, please. For us, uh, so hi everyone, I'm Akshat Singhal from Dangal Play OTD platform. So for us, content and marketing are the two most important uh, aspects of the business. And data personalization is uh, it's applied everywhere. For example, we have created like 40 cohorts uh, of different users watching different genres, users who are only watching TV shows, users who are only watching movies, right? And from notifications to email marketing and everything, even the, even the first show that you see on the carousel is different for every cohort. So data personalization plays a big role. Even in targeted marketing, we show different, uh, different creatives to different uh, set of audiences. For example, some cities will uh, set, get a different creative and other cities will also get some other creatives. So yeah, that way. Yeah, my next question is to Sarvesh. Uh, Sarvesh, you've been, uh, you know, a specialized organization in the organic space, SEO That's space right. in specific, mm -hmm. and doing wonderfully well. What specific roles do data analytics and, uh, you know, integration of data, uh, you know, uh, how it can be used in the organic space? Uh, it'll be great to hear from you on that. Absolutely. So I think, you know, uh, again, data plays a very integral role. Um, SEO is all based on keywords, keyword research, right? And according to me, I mean, the way I look at it, keyword research is equal to consumer data, consumer insight. It's a direct proxy, right? So for the, for the industries that we operate in or our clients operate in, we extract the entire universe of keywords, which is sometimes literally tens of thousands of keywords. And, you know, pulling out the keywords, the search volumes, and tracking the volumes over months, over years, and see how the, those are evolving, that gives us immense data and immense insight into what the consumers are doing. So I'll give you an example. So all keywords related to personal loan industry, it's approximately 98 lakh searches on a monthly basis, right? And uh, this has grown by 30% over the last year. And it's grown by, I think, almost 100% since COVID, right? So that is how search volumes are expanding and exploding. But within personal loan, earlier people would only search for a personal loan, but now people search for personal loan for wedding, personal loan for medical emergency, for travel. So these have almost become products. So actually, three years ago, four years ago, the searches for these keywords was possibly in hundreds. And now the search volumes for these keywords are probably in tens of thousands, right? So because we've been tracking the data, we know that we know how things are evolving. So we have almost created products. We've gone back to the client and told them that, listen, you need to have this product page or 
you might be selling the same product at the back end, but on the front end, we product ID, product, pro, we've converted them into products, and they're listed as four separate products on the client's website. Right, so this is how integral, I, I think, a role data plays. It gives us the insight. Another example is that, you know, um, instant personal loans. So personal loans has evolved into instant personal loan. So again, this has come from just looking at data, looking at search volumes, and seeing how things evolve. Sure. sure. Um, yeah, great. So the next question is, and uh, you know, I would, I, would, I would start by saying that data is, uh, you know, uh, it's very, very important for everybody, and it is, uh, uh, you know, uh, right to safeguard it at all levels. And uh, the way the data is accumulated, you know, there's a lot of ethicality about it, you know, and, uh, you know, and, and the way we use it as well. And, and there are certain GDPR rules outside and also, you know, in due course of time, it's being implemented in India as well. How, how well are we ready as marketeers, uh, you, know, uh, you know, from that standpoint, from a security standpoint of data and how well do we use it? And the ethicality of the way we uh, acquire that data as well. So, uh, Akhil, we'll start with you. So I think at least from the industries that most of us represent, uh, in terms of data security, everything that we really gather, first of all, is consent based, right? So the customer is consenting to sharing a certain amount of data, is it, it's shared for a very specific purpose. Uh, there are enough, I mean, we, we all, I think it's one of the most highly regulated industries. So in that sense, even when you are putting out a, you know, we're, we're putting a message out there to a customer that goes through several uh, I would say uh, levels of uh, checking, including regulatory compliance before it can even hit the market, right? So from that sense, I think data security is something that all, I think pretty much, you know, uh, all of us within the industry take very seriously. Uh, but I was just thinking about the conversation earlier, which Ravi from HDFC Bank was talking about. And really, uh, when it comes to data security, really uh, so much of data today is out there that uh, we don't even realize when we are giving it as consumers, right? Uh, so if you think of all of the frauds that he was talking about, it's, a, it's, it's essentially social engineering, right? Somebody has picked up a number from somewhere called, like if I was HDFC bank and I'm, you know, the, one of the biggest banks in the country, what, are the, what is the likelihood that if I call five random people, right, uh, and say, talk to them about their HDFC bank account, well, at, least, at least one or two of them are going to say yes, right? <laughs> Right? That happens to all of us, right? Uh, I have had in my own family people who fall in for, you know, uh, uh, fall in pay to scam. Like, oh, okay, fine. My Vodafone number is now going to be disconnected. There are only three players, boss, in the industry, right? So, in that sense, data security goes beyond, I think, just what we are doing. Uh, it goes, I think, there's a lot of education that's needed at the consumer level about understanding how, you know, how your data can be taken from you. There is some education required about where the different ways in which you share data. I was talking about consent based earlier. Nobody reads through the, like, you know, technically we're all, all, all above board, but nobody reads through the rules and regulations about what is, what am I giving consent for? Every app I download and sign up for, I'm giving away some amount of data. How is that data going to be used? That is not something that's always, at least as an industry, we are regulated. Right? We have several checks, regulatory compliance for us to kind of do that. But for consumers, consumers are still exposed. And the more amount of time that we spend on digital platforms, on digital media, right, it can be used to help us. Like, you know, with an OTD platform, serve me content that I am more, you know, likely to consume. But at the same time, there are going to be bad actors out there who are going to take that similar sorts of information and try to take advantage of it. So I think there is... Uh, I don't think it's a one size fits all. There's no there's no magic bullet, silver bullet that we can say, okay, fine, we're going to keep everything secure. Even if we do at our end, at the end of the day, a lot of the gaps that or the cracks that happen in data, they don't happen at an institutional level or an organizational level. They're happening at an individual one on one where somehow, somewhere, somehow, somebody is going to extracting a little bit of information from me and then using that to, you know, further. Prasad, your take on it. Akhil mentioned all about uh, the data security and uh, uh, privacy aspect of it. The only one point I'll add to what he was saying is uh, the consumer need to know why we are collecting the data. And as a responsible brand, we should only collect the data which is required by us. So uh, in let's assume the digital business, what we represent, uh, as a part of the proposal form or whatever information we are seeking from the customer, uh, we have started doing from last uh, more than a year now, 
where for every single point which I am, or every single data point, every single field which I am asking as a part of the proposal form, I am giving the reason to the customer. If wherever I am asking the uh, PAN number, I am giving that tooltip to the customer that this information will be used in this manner. Whenever I am asking for uh, uh, any other documentation from the customer, we are informing them that this particular information is for uh, this particular purpose. So that purpose is very much important. That also gives a lot of comfort to the consumers that what information you are seeking from me is getting utilized in deciding my application uh, a closure. And that's where it becomes very, very important. From data safety and security perspective, uh, one more angle which has started coming in now is um, uh, in the journey when we are doing with customers, uh, we normally use a lot of integrations to verify the data. Okay? Somebody puts a PAN number, we do ping the service to verify the PAN is right and the customer has given that information about the PAN and the name which is given by the customer, both are matching. Now when all these things are happening in a passive manner, customers do not do everything on his or her own, it is happening passively in the back end and the background. I think somewhere that education, what even Akhil was mentioning about, has to go to the consumers that these are safe techniques through which the data is getting collected, which is for your own benefit rather than you giving it in a, a different documentation manner, which will get stored in multiple places. We are integrating with multiple third party ecosystems, including the government ecosystems. Tomorrow, ABHA will also come into the perspective the Bhima Sugam will also come into the perspective which will enable customers to uh, share the information seamlessly from one insurer to another insurer. That ecosystem when it builds, uh, we have to invest into consumer education to, uh, to help them understand that entire uh, aspect of uh, data integration and how safely, securely data can be fetched and utilized. So that's where it becomes very important. Wonderful, wonderful way of... Uh, expressing it. Uh, my next question now is that, you know, with the advent of AI and ML technologies and, and a lot of data, you know, which is very secure data as well at the same time, and there are technologies and tools out there which can enable, you know, to convert first person data to hash data and then therefore target it as well. But from a security standpoint, you know, the BFSI segment in specific is, uh, you know, uh, is, is very, very vulnerable to, you know, a lot of frauds and otherwise. So, uh, how is the acceptance of this entire bit on specifically on data and analytics, uh, you know, uh, segment of it, and how well is it protected? Therefore, to use these technologies to augment other things. My question is to you. I think um, all of us are evolving with time. There is just so much to learn out there, especially now that we're storing all our data on cloud, right? Uh, our collective experience is as old as three years perhaps in this. I mean, whatever that we used to do earlier uh, doesn't really hold good anymore. Uh, every week we unfortunately hear of some of the other cyber attacks, etc. I mean, just last month, uh, I think for a good day, Microsoft and every related party was down. We do not know if it was cyber attack or something else. So I, I still think it, it's a long way ahead. Uh, there are just so many handshakes, whether it is between our core systems or the cloud, what we as marketeers want to do and what our partners are helping us achieve, right? At least, I, I at least see there are about three hands that are changing here. Uh, there, unfortunately, no matter how much you want to tighten the security aspect, uh, something or the other is a miss until it is really caught in, unfortunately, someone plays uh, foul on it and data gets leaked. Uh, we all need to, as much as we want to fasten our speed, go to market quickly, uh, adapt technology, innovate, as of yesterday, we ourselves need to be cognizant of the fact that the learning aspect also comes with time and of course there's a certain risk and threat attached to it. I think the work of CROs have also increased just as much. Uh, we need to invest in security as well. I know uh, that the bills have uh, increased, the budgeting has increased, and but we need to take it seriously. Otherwise, uh, just one uh, bad day and uh, you'll be in the front page of or the headline and your servers will be uh, hijacked and hacked and uh, obviously we'll, we'll all be in a bad soup but we all need to also invest in learning and understanding what are the uh, ways to mitigate uh, the data that we are capturing. 
so there's a lot of lnd to be done uh, uh, interaction with the customer to tell them how to avoid things as well and uh, more of like that akshat why uh, why don't you add on to this uh, so uh, i think so consumers are getting very precaution while sharing their data now uh, for example 3 years ago whenever you download an app it's a, it asks you uh, would you uh, would you want to get notifications from this app allow don't allow share location allow don't allow so 3 years ago users used used to just click allow for everything now users just click don't allow for everything even for notification like they just don't read that it's asking for notifications they just click on don't allow right so users are getting like uh, uh, cautious that way also process uh, we follow a full uh, guideline which is shared by gdp on how to process the data how to store the data and everyone should have a data officer at the at an office to make sure that the data is protected in every way possible great you know which also brings me to the last question in service this is for you and uh, you know we, <coughs> we we all have spoken about what is being done now but from a you know point of view of what do you think is the future of consumer insights within the marketing scope and because you know we are, are otherwise are, you know uh, marketing to a lot of so how do you see the organizational uh, changes happening keeping consumer insights in the center for the future as well so two parts to it one is that how does the organizational structure uh, of the future look like you know considering consumer insights being at the center and a lot of fintech movements happening a lot of advancements in ai and all also happening that's one part of it and what is the future of consumer insights in marketing from a standpoint that we are maybe at a 60% stage there and uh, targeting people so i'll answer the second one first i think um again on the organic side or on the seo side uh we are also facing challenges of big data because you know at least with the enterprise brands that we work with it's no longer tracking 100 200 keywords we are tracking literally lakhs of keywords we want daily rankings uh we are also tracking rankings for competitors so you know the volume of data has actually become big data and we are not able to share rankings with clients on excel files because the excel files just won't load right so even we have been forced to and uh, you know adopt ai and ml and so i think that adoption has already happened where we are using uh, for example we are even bucketing lakhs of keywords in a matter of minutes so we do um, you know we 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 train the ai model and then we use the machine learning to help us bucket keywords very quickly to identify you know uh, you know identify what the competition is doing to identify content topics and content briefs right so all of this adoption of ai and ml is already happening uh, in what we are doing and um, even with insights right i think um, what i see in the future happening is that you know as far as data is concerned as far as search volumes is concerned i think the explosion is going to continue one of the other trends we've observed is while the search volumes are increasing the search volumes are increasing across the country uh so the growth is not limited to the top 5 or the top 10 cities right so we see uh on the lending side almost 49% of the search volumes are coming from outside the top 15 cities right uh on the investment side and investment is you know uh i'm i'm looking at you know share market research dmats and mutual funds and all of that you know bucketed into investments there is a monthly search volume of almost 65 crores and almost 65% of the 65 lakh searches is coming from rest of india and again rest of india is outside the top 15 cities right so in my mind in the future the search volumes from outside the from outside the top 15 cities is going to continue to grow i think the uh, app ecosystem is going to get even deeper um you know there's again i was collecting some data and you know almost 19 crore um you know stock trading apps have been downloaded in the last one year almost 34 crore personal loan apps have been downloaded in the last one year and i only see these app downloads increasing further so in terms of you know uh, so i think this is the direction in which uh, data is moving how do the first question which is uh, you know about how the organization needs to evolve you know honestly i think that is something that the brands need to figure out i think as an agency i can supply them with the data and the insights sure 
So I'll just add to the point. Uh, see, uh, what has happened that when we talk about even the SEO part of it and the search uh, which consumers are doing, uh, today what is happening that when we look at the Google SERP as well as the YouTube searches, where a lot of searches have started happening, including Amazon Flipkart searches for the product specific searches, consumer behavior has changed, but the intention was to seek the information. When I'm searching something on SEO page, uh, I'm still seeking information. But today with chat GPT coming in and a lot of AI based search engines are uh, coming in, even Google has launched their own search engine, uh, Microsoft has launched their own uh, search engine based on AI. I think it will be all about solution based searches. And that's where we need to start uh, preparing for uh, now. Uh, rather than just serving the information and optimizing on the basis of my information getting listed there to a solution based uh, searches where my brand is coming as a part of the solution which chat gpt is giving as an answer i think that is going to be a big shift as a big challenge uh, from the uh, brand's perspective because sooner or later uh, what i believe people will start uh, seeking uh, solutions from a uh, chat gpt rather than uh, seeking information from a, a google uh, search engine so that might result into it and second thing which might happen is the consumer preferences uh, that the type of content I'm consuming today when I uh, talk about searching something uh, my preferred uh, mode let's assume is text but somebody else's preferred mode for the same kind of content is video in that scenario a chat GPT kind of a solution can serve that in the mode which consumer is preferring and not the way which search engine is uh, providing and then selecting whether I want to watch video, image, text and everything. So that will be a big shift which will happen sooner than later and as a brand uh, we need to be part of that uh, uh, consumer evolution. Sure. Okay. I don't know if we have time for just one more but essentially so yeah. the, the point that Prasad just made in and I was honestly an advocate till probably a couple of days ago because for me really we were gearing a lot of our work especially on the marketing side to see how do we prepare for you know the age of AI but there are like I think over the last couple of days a few kind of statistics that have been published which kind of give me a little bit of pause one is that if you look at the usage of AI like active users in AI I think chat GPT had something like a hundred million users active right it grew exponentially but since then that growth has tapered off if you look at what people are using AI for Typically, they're using it for like another Google. They're expecting, they're writing in a search query in ChatGPT, expecting to get an answer that is maybe slightly better than Google. But after two or three instances of them using the this thing, they switch over to Google, right? So they're going back, right? And what that kind of tells me is that you know, at the end of the, today, at least in the age of digital and search, the best alternative to Google is just Google, right? So consumers are using a new technology and then and then, and then they're going back. And for us, really, it's understanding this behavior. Which is why I'm saying, if I just look only at the data, if I only look at the data and the data tells me a story saying, okay, fine, exponential growth, 100 million users, compare that against, say, real world analysis when you go into, I think Sarvesh had an excellent point about where is real usage coming from, right? Uh, I used to work in a, uh, I used to work in a, uh, in, my, in my previous role in an organization which which used to really delve into consumer research. We were very surprised at how much internet was being used in smaller towns. Much more than it was being used in, uh, you know, uh, in larger towns because it's the only source of access they get. In a big city, I have access to choices. I can walk into a mall, I can walk into a store. In a smaller town, I don't have that, right? So today, so much of digital India really is outside of the top 15 out of the top 20 cities. And for them, really, that's where they're getting their information. But their needs are, I mean, the way they search is still very basic, right? Uh, I live, for example, in today, I have the opportunity to live in a relatively small state called Goa, right? Which is basically an agglomeration of villages. If you walk into a village today, I live in a village called Paithona, next to me is a village called Salvador. If you look at how people over there really use internet, it's very, it's, on the one hand, they're all streaming ODT. Right? They're all using WhatsApp. Very few are actually transacting online outside of GPay. Right? But when they want to search for information, they're really going on, they're really going on Google. If I ask them, okay, fine, chat GPT, unfortunately today they still don't know how to use it. 
right? So, and I think that is something that we kind of, uh, like up until yesterday, like I said, a couple of days ago, I was so gungo about this idea. But I think now the data is kind of telling us a slightly different story. Yeah, people are still on the traditional modes of searching and everything. One of my clients, you know, told me, what if you search for uh, what are India's top five insurance companies? and I should show on chat GPT in the top five. I said that boss, everything is coming from like a source in the background and that's where it's fetched from. Like though we should be prepared for the future, but everything is, goes back to basics, you know, at the end of the day. I think with that, we will uh, conclude this uh, discussion. Thank you everyone, you know, for, for the wonderful answers.